Welcome to the Information Command Center as St. Lucia continues to mitigate COVID-19. And today we have a subject matter that is at the forefront of the minds of all of St. Lucia. We're talking about the National Insurance Corporation and we know that the government of St. Lucia, along with the NIC, they're making provisions to be able to give support, financial support, income support, to St. Lucians who have been so devastatingly affected by COVID-19. In with me is the director of the National Insurance Corporation, Mr. Matthew Mathra, the head of group internal audit, who is Ms. Mrs. Sue Ann Chalry Payne, and the communications manager, McNaughton McLean. Gentlemen and lady, thank you so much for coming in. We know that St. Lucians, as I indicated, at the forefront of their minds is really how the NIC, since the announcement was made, is able to meet the demand that is out there regarding the sort of support that you're providing to them for those of uh, the thousands of St. Lucians who have now been rendered unemployed by the COVID-19. Let's start with you, Mr. Uh, Matthew Mathre, the director of NIC, perhaps just to, to encapsulate the very beginning of what happened. We know COVID-19 came in. We heard about the thousands of St. Lucians who were rendered unemployed as a result, and the NIC decided that it can step in, bearing in mind that St. Lucia does not have the sort of unemployment benefit program. So from the NIC's perspective, you believed that you were able to rise to the occasion and meet that demand. Yes, um, good day, uh, Madam Moderator, and good day to your viewers. And I want to thank you for affording us the opportunity to come here to try to clarify some of the issues that you and um, the viewers may have. Well, the enactment of the, of the uh, Sartre Instrument number 64, which was um, detailed on the 24th of April, empowered the National Insurance Corporation to launch its economic relief program. And that was to help NIC contributors navigate the economic hardship which was brought about by the coronavirus epidemic. Now, although the intention of the NIC um, at the time was to um, consider a three-month program and the decision was taken to launch a three-month program, the intention had always been that should the conditions merit it, and if it was affordable, that this would be extended to, the, um, to a six-month period, or we'll extend the program. We have noted um, that if we look at the conditions, that the tourism sector, and a lot of what is happening now, actually was in play at the start of, of the, the program. The tourism sector had been expected to resume operations in July 2020. However, many of the hotels that were expected to spearhead the resumption have since delayed reopening to after July, and those that do open will be opening with reduced staff due to significantly reduced occupancy. And as we know, one of the sizable hotels in the South has already issued redundancy notices to its staff. Of course, the various sectors of the economy are linked, and the significantly high level of persons from the hotel sector who remain unemployed is very likely to impact negatively on the other sectors. Now, if you look at um, the, the news that has been, um, we've been hearing recently, for example, the WHO records the highest daily increase in global coronavirus cases, um, and it was prompting low-income countries to, to, to take heed of this thing. And that was on May 20th, when the, the, the number of daily infections jumped to over 150,000. And as of yesterday, 1st of July, that number had shot to 196,000 persons. Mm -hmm. Recently, um, June 19th, the cruise lines voluntarily suspended all trips out of the U.S. ports until September 15th. Now, members of that trade group had previously been on the, a mandatory, um, a mandatory sort of order that they should have stayed in port until July 24th. They unilaterally extended that. Just on June 30th, the EU banned American visitors from entering its shores, entering its waters. And over the last few days, the US has continued to experience a record-breaking daily number of infections. Even now, most of the states are starting to roll back um, reopening plans. So they're either slowing it down or they're reversing it, and they're now starting to impose restrictions on, um, on businesses. Now, 
In making this decision, the, like I said, the NIC had to consider the affordability of the program. And we uh, solicited actuarial input to determine that whatever we'd be spending would not compromise the fund. And based on that, um, we were able to decide on the, on the three-month program where we, we sort of projected the cost of between 30 to $80 million for the three months. And that depended on which, which scenario we followed. So if it was at the low end where we thought uh, maybe a fewer number of persons would have been unemployed, then we were looking at a $30 million figure. In fact, looking at it now, the projections for the three months are looking in the region of $35 million. And if we were to go the six months, we're looking at an amount not exceeding $80 million. So the figure we have projected for the three months as a maximum worst case scenario figure is a maximum we'd now expect for the three months. So on that basis, um, the, the, all the conditions were in the, in the slot for the board to agree to a, 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 an extension of the program. Let's hear from, uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Director. Uh, Mrs. Payne, from your end of things, being able now to um, sort of galvanize the support that would have been needed to, be, to meet the demand, uh, how was that process? Can you describe that to, to us? The process of meeting the demand? And I see being able yes, to. Yes, so because you didn't have that sort of system already existing, oh. Oh. and so in able to be able to get that system operational. Yes. Because I think that is perhaps one of the things that's the sort of disconnect with the public, because the public is assuming that the NIC would have been up and yes. ready to yes. go. Because yes. so yes. what was missing in order for you not to be able to meet that demand? But, I, I will let Suad come in because she had a big part to play, but I want to just give a broad overview. Because um, our board met on a Saturday, the 20th of March, when we, we considered what was happening to decide whether we should go ahead with that program. And the board met on a Saturday. We, at that time, it was a closed down. Everywhere was shut down, I think. Mm -hmm. And we had to have a Zoom, a Zoom meeting. We had to get legislation passed. And the legislation to give us the power to move into thing was done on the 24th of April. Um, so, and then after that, we had to put the systems in place. And so I will come there just now. We had to put systems in place to accept applications. We had to accept employee information. Um, we had to, to look into application information to link the application information that came in through the portal with what we had on the NIC database. Um, we had to upgrade systems. In, I, I, we had to upgrade systems <laughs> to accommodate the massive increase in traffic because remember, our site was not designed to take mm -hmm. this thing. Right? And you know, even countries have a lot more resources than us. Um, as soon as they opened up to, for example, Obamacare, whatever it was, it then crashed, right? Um, so we had to, 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 to put things in place to upgrade our system um, at a time, again, when everywhere around the place was, was shut down. We had to re reallocate staff from other, other, other duties to, to deal with this new program. And again, we know what the NIC was set up to do. We were set up to pay um, the, the existing slate of many of, of, of benefits, sickness, maternity, and the, lo um, the long-term ones like like survivors and retirement, right. et cetera. Right? And the, the 10 percent, well, the five and the five, five employer, five employer, is the premium to pay for these services. Okay? It does not have anything in it for the ER program which we're doing there. So it was something that, 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 that the board had to make a decision on and have legislative authority to do so, which is why we had to wait for the legislative authority. Which uh, came a full month yes, after we had been hearing that the NIC would have been providing yes. this um, yes. support. And because, and you know, it's not just a matter of legislation. Here is a piece of paper. There's a lot of to and fro. The, we had to, in the AG's office with a significant role in that, and our senior legal counsel, and there was a lot of to and fro to make sure the legislation was right. And, and then the legislation passed on the 24th of April. Um, so, and then we, we at, at the same time, we have all the staff <laughs> reallocated because we had to pull people in from vacation. Yeah. All of the inspectors, inspectors, we had to pull them in and, and put them into that program. And remember, it's, we're making that uh, as we go along because we have a system which was not designed for that, so you have to be programming it mm -hmm. constantly. And the, the, the programmers who are at home are working day and night to get this thing out. And then we have to reorient our operations to a more online system because, again, we were in the, we, though we had some online facilities, we were more in the, the our operations were more geared towards the traditional face to face physical mm -hmm. documentation. So all of these things we had to be doing in that short space of time. And, and at the same time, we had to make sure we put in controls in place. Because as you heard recently in the United States, after they took months, they, remember they just sent a check to everybody. Because my brother was in the Bahamas and he got a check, right? And so they sent checks to everybody. 
It took months after they passed the legislation in Congress to enact this thing. And after they did that, they were paying dead people. Billions of dollars to dead people. Now, think of it, if the NIC were to do something like this, or oh, there's a, a certain level of fraud, um, which was detected, <laughs> the very same people who give us licks for taking too long would say that, look, you're paying contributors money, and we've not been careful enough. And, and Suan had a significant role in, in because she was paying in the program first, and she had a significant role in making sure we put in the controls in place to ensure that we could at least um, uh, weed out some of the, 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 you know, some people always try a thing eh, in our global past. Some of the, the things that, that came in which would not meet the requirements for this thing. So I don't know if Swan could probably build on and give you a little more detail um, because she was instrumental in ensuring other systems were in place. Okay. In how you were able to make sure the ship was running tight. Yes, I mean, in addition to what the director was saying, IT obviously was key to getting all of this pulled together because we had to go electronic, both for efficiency and to reduce the level of inaccuracy from manual intervention. Mm -hmm. We had to wait for the legislation to be passed because that informed the program and that informed what we can accept, what the qual qualifying criteria was, and so on. So that was, that was key to, to getting it all pulled together. Controls, definitely, and that is built in from the beginning of the receipt of the applications, the online e-form. Configuring our program, pulling in resources while continuing to maintain the regular mandate of the NIC trying to juggle staff. We have done quite a bit in terms of bringing in some persons who were employed with NIC before, were familiar with the system, just to build our capacity to some extent, because we needed to do that. IT being key, brought on additional IT persons who are external. Whatever resources that we needed to help facilitate that, we did. And you, can, and you must understand with social distancing, we cannot pack people into the, into the building. So in as much as we wanted to bring other staff in, we'd have to get space for them. Um, and right now we have most of our staff in, a few, very few are working from home right Mostly. now. Yeah. And we're looking at some space on the floor to see if we could, on the upper floor to see if we could fit in some other persons because we anticipate that this thing has not ended. And if what's happening in the United States right now, because most of the increase is in our part of the hemisphere. Prior to that, it was near on the other side. Now the, the rate of increase, the, the number of persons every, 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 every day is a lot higher than what it used to be at the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. now, we, we have to take precautions. So right now we've been planning um, for, for how we will accommodate meeting our, our, our uh, mandates um, should the, this, this pandemic again touch our shores. So let's talk some numbers now. Uh, McNaughton, give us a, a sense of how many applications to date that the, not necessarily process, but to date that you've received mm. Well, well, I can tell you we, we've processed over 21,000 applications um, to date, and that would have been as mm -hmm. of last night, over 21,000. We have made over 18,500 payments to individuals, and the average payout per individual is $830.16, that's per payment. And um, the, the grand total paid is 15 million, um, 15.3 million, thereabout. Um, that, that, that's the, the, the total payout to date uh, under the economic relief program. And, and, and you will note that the, the average will be increasing because in the first month, we had um, persons who were on vacation um, that, that would be getting income from the employers. Um, they maybe have been getting salaries from the employers. Um, so you find that um, based on the program, we would give you what you would be entitled on the NIC, less whatever you've gotten from the employers. Most of that would disappear in May. So you find that the amounts would be increasing in May. So the, where the average was about 800 or 700 and something mm -hmm. uh, in the 790s in, 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 in April, April yeah. now it's, it's climbing up. So now it's about $830, yes. dollars, yeah. and it will keep going up as more and more persons are paid. Yes. Now we're hearing, so we want to be able to break it down so people can understand. We're hearing lots of people saying, what, March? Is the NIC paying out for the month of March? No. no. The, 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 the program covers the months of April, May, and June. So and the extension now will cover the additional months of July, August, and September. So for better understanding, why not the month of March? Because we had the shutdown happening in the month of March. Towards the end of March, um, yeah. 23rd of March, well, most people would have received wages by then. And I'm only just not jump into something, one. Number two, we have to have a decision of our board because this is not, it. remember we did not have the legislation mm -hmm. for that. So there had to have been some consultations. We had to be liaising with our actuary 
to determine whether what it was, it was cost effective and it would not compromise the, the, the National Insurance Corporation Fund. And so all of that would take time. And eventually, well, we had to get the legislation. We had the, the, the legislation was enacted and that gave us authority to go ahead. And with that, we were able to go ahead. Now, also, had we, been, had we had to go back to March, there would be a lot more complications. It would, it, would have, it would have delayed the process even more because a lot of it was not as clear-cut in March. Mm -hmm. Businesses were operating, some were not. Persons were on vacation. It would have been very difficult for us to deliver it then. So we had to go when the, the authorization was given, after we had everything in front of us and we knew what we were doing. So have we been able to cover all of the month of April for those people who applied? Outstanding months? You have to figure that's about 90-something percent. Yeah. The, the thing is, applications continue to come in. So whilst we process for April, May, and June, persons are still applying for, for periods April. for <laughs> April currently. Yeah. So there's always a, a catch-up for April. And so even if someone were to apply in the month of July, they would be able, you would be able to pay them retroactively for the periods of April, May, and June. Once we have the information to support it, because they start end of a, they start a start of layoff date or their last date of employment. If it shows that it was prior to April, then they would be entitled once they met all of the other qualifying criteria, and the employer also confirmed that they were. We are, we are seeing that a lot where it comes to persons who seem to have been having technical difficulties with mm -hmm. the form. It took them. Up to now, persons are still, I guess, those persons who are not as IT savvy. So we've seen those applications coming in mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I must add also mm -hmm. that we did make some arrangements for persons who did not have access. And um, they were able to go to the ICT centers and they were assisted. We made arrangements that they would call and would make the appointments and they would go at the appointed time and the, the technicians would assist them because they're very familiar with the form. We, the problem we had was in Castries because there's not an ICT center close to, to Castries. But we have made some arrangements at our office now where that a, a number of the persons in, in and around Castries do come to our offices to um, complete the ERP application form. So that has assisted a great deal. Yeah, but there would be um, another very significant factor in that people were given incorrect information. Absolutely. And um, mm -hmm. you'd find that, for example, if you have a wrong bank account number, uh, the bank would send the monies back. Now the bank would send back the monies without any details, so you have to go back and do a lot of tracing. Um, and remember, you have thousands of claims to process, so then you cannot take too many resources on those. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we do try to, to, to deliver those. And Mark, you'll probably later, or if you want now, give a, an indication of those um, kind of problems that we, we, we seem to come across. Um, the, yeah, the, 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 I think one of the, the principal in issues that we have in is the account information, Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem to put the wrong, uh, maybe people aren't aware of what really is the correct bank account information. Uh, we see a lot of um, ATM card numbers and in some instances even the PIN is inserted on the form as the account information. The other problem that you have, people um, do, um, put the bank where they transact business rather the branch where they transact business rather than the branch where it was open. And that will require the bank code. So all of that, the money comes back to us. We have issues where the information submitted by the employer does not match what was submitted by the uh, employee. So you say the layoff date, for instance, or the amount of vacation pay or stipend or financial assistance differs from what is indicated by on the ER on the in the employer portal, also on the C free forms when we run the checks. So all of these things also delay some of some of the um, some of the, the, the processing NI numbers, uh, and this can happen in number transposition. Simple thing that instead of putting a one, you put a three or a four, and and this. But it, while it may seem trivial, Simple, it one. is it because the, it, what you absolutely do, yeah. because once the system picks up the inconsistencies, then this thing goes into a query, and then somebody has to investigate that claim to try and address the issue. It takes some time. Um, for the most part, people don't seem to want to accept that these are some of the issues. But I think once we explain it to them, they get a better sense of appreciation for the hard work that it takes for us to clear those issues. Um, some of the other issues, the contribution on record submitted in the C3 form um, from, from the employee was reported to be on layoff. In some cases, that individual worked for April, but so the, the, 
the claim is disallowed for the, for the period, mm -hmm. only the month of April. But for the other period, once the conditions remain that you're not employed, then you know you will be, you will um, get your 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 payment on the. Now ELP. this is a continual application process that one must go through. So each month that I remain unemployed, mm. I need to apply. Is no, how does it one work? application. However, the employer would need to upload information if the circumstances change on via the, the employer portal, and that is accessible on the NIC website. Why, why are the employers finding it so difficult to, to get the form filled out and have it accurate on the first go? Yeah, I think Suwan is the <laughs> one dealing with the employers. Yeah, I mean, with everything else that is new, I think it takes some time to adjust and familiarize yourself. So the, the first period, getting the April period up and running, would be the most challenging. We try to include as much detail, explanatory notes as to what is expected on both on the portal itself and in a, a guidance tutorial document that we had published to assist employers in completing those, those forms. One of the major issues we seem to have had in terms of understanding the completion of the, the form on the employer's part is the section that speaks to any monies paid to those individuals. We got a lot of that in the sense that in the, in the beginning, the first run, the April run, the first upload, there seemed to have been a misunderstanding between amounts that are normally paid to employees in terms of salary and amounts that were actually paid to persons during the layoff period. So you'd find an employer may have entered if somebody earns, say, $3,000 for the month. In the column that asks how much was contributed to that person in the, employ in the layoff period, in keeping with the act, whatever that amount was, it would be deducted from the entitlement on the ERP because they would have earned a financial benefit then. Because of the inaccuracy in understanding that, you found persons would have included salary amounts in there that would have resulted obviously in a reduced payout that would have, should have been, had it been an actual financial, financial assistance given to the individual. These were clarified and you would find employers would have come back and, and corrected it. I, we don't anticipate that issue come May and June and to help ease the administrative burden on the part of the employers, we have gone ahead and rolled over the information submitted in April to be applicable for May and June, giving employers, sending an email out to employers, asking them whether there are no changes, and gives NIC the go ahead to use that same information to complete the following months. So there's no obligation on the part of the employers to come back to the portal if the information remains the same, whatever information was submitted for April remains the same. If, however, there are changes in the information, there's an expectation and it's important for NIC's purposes to know that persons are still unemployed or they're not earning any income or even in cases where there were legitimate amounts financial assistance paid to some persons in April because we have rolled over that information to May if employers are not updating us to say this amount is only paid for April not for me and go in and remove the amounts in May and I see would process on the understanding that these amounts are paid again and then you get the risk of I guess underpaying somebody so we send the email out to employers seeking their assistance in providing that information. If there are no changes, the chest replies saying no changes. We get the go ahead to continue to process for those persons. So this is heavily dependent on the employers being very proactive and playing their part. Playing their part, yes, for the benefit of their employees. Yes. All right, we'll take a very short break. When we come back, we'll be continuing the discussion. And, of course, we are taking your questions, so you can place those on the uh, Facebook uh, platform and be happy to pose those questions to the panel. And we do have quite a bit coming in. <laughs> so stay with us. We'll be back shortly. As part of government's social stabilization plan to assist persons who have lost their means of earning due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government of St. Lucia has implemented the Income Support Program, where non-contributors to the NIC shall receive a monthly payment of $500 for the next three months. Taxi drivers, jet ski operators, vendors, agro-processors, tour guides, hairdressers, 
barbers, small bar and restaurant operators, construction workers, and other sole traders who meet the criteria can apply using the Government of St. Lucia's website www.govt.lc. Payments will be made directly via electronic transfer to the recipient's bank account. The Income Support Program – Simple Strides Towards Recovery And thank you so much for staying with us. We're here with the director of the National Insurance Corporation, the NIC, Mr. Matthew Mathre. We also have the internal uh, group internal auditor, uh, Mrs. Sue Ann Shari Pain, and of course the communications manager, Mr. McNaughton McLean. We have some questions coming in, as I indicated um, just before the break and try to do, really go through them. Uh, any idea when payments will be sent out and how will one know when they will get the payment? Because I have not received any feedback since I applied online. So how do you now give an indication of what someone's status is? So I'm gonna do. Okay, well, we, we welcome persons to send messages to our uh, emails or online chat seeking any updates that they want. But from NIC's, from NIC's point, we do send out emails to individuals informing them when a payment has been processed. In most cases, where there are queries, persons should receive a call indicating that your, payment is be, your application has been processed, but there is an, an, an issue. So from NIC's end, it would be via email or via the, the chat. And from person's end who seek information on the application, they're welcome to send a message, email, or on the live chat. We've been getting quite a few of that. Of those. And, um, but we also have an email uh, um, account set up specifically to deal with matters on the ERP. Um, it's COVID-19 at stlucianic.org. Uh, this uh, with over 21,000 applications, you can imagine, um, we have quite a lot of email to respond to. Uh, last night at 7 o'clock, um, the communications officer was trying to ensure that she had less than 1,000. Um, to, to, so she was responding to ensure by today she, had, she would have had less than 1,000. I'm certain by the time she came in the morning, they would have had an additional 2,000. And it's not that we're not we deliberately not responding. It's the volume, the volume of calls. People would say that they call in the numbers that we provide and nobody's answering. It's not that we're not answering. We are on the phone at the time dealing with another customer. Um, I had a discussion with um, the team um, asking perhaps whether or not we could have utilized a system like is used with the airlines, for instance. If you call the airlines, they'll tell you, you have a waiting time of about 30 minutes and, um, and you, your, your call will be answered in the queue. And I was advised that probably would not work for our purposes because most people have, are calling on a, on a mobile device. And if you're asking them to wait for 30 minutes, then it is likely that you will chew up all of the minutes. Yeah, so we, that's something we couldn't consider. I can say that, um, I mean, we understand the situation the, the applicant or the caller is, is in. And, and, um, we know that without when people are not working that it could be i mean when you have bills and stuff to pay that it could be it could be a problem a problematic mm -hmm. if there's, there's no money coming in um, and even right now we're looking to see if we could even speed up this thing because right now the programmers are working on a way to Im for the e emails to go out immediately as a this, it's processed so mm -hmm. at least people are notified that um it's an automated that, that, process yes yeah. it's 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 been done because right now we have we have the system um, where we we have to to pull in we have, we have the templates where you have to pull in the email addresses, et cetera. So now we, we can, we're trying to get something online by, by Wednesday next week. So as size process, it goes on. But we have staff actually allocated well uh, to, to re responding to those emails. And some of them will go through the gap, will, will fall through the gap. Um, some of them would have been disallowed and we pro because sometimes the persons will try to, to get through to us. Um, and then, well, the application would come in and the system would automatically reject it because of certain things. Um, but we have people trying to see how we could allocate resources to, to deal with those things and make sure the person get a, a, a quick enough answer on those things. So we understand. But if she calls in, uh, whenever we get a query, we have people immediately trying to sort it out, especially when it comes to payments. But it's uh, just the sheer volume that you can't get to oh. everyone in that sort of timely fashion. Yeah. Another question is, um, uh, one individual is hoping that May and June payments will be together. Because now since we're in July, do you do a double payment? Do you 
quarterly payments. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you, could, you could go on that. But I could tell you that we have been paying me already because um, we've gone a significant amount of me because mm -hmm. in the in the um, in the the what eighteen thousand um, payments we've made um, quite a chunk is in me. But Sue, you could talk, I mean, Sue, and you could talk about the, um, the yeah. So what we try to do now that we in June in July, as you indicated, once we have the information to support the ability to pay for the back periods, we we would pay that. So for example, if somebody's application comes in and they're applicable for April, May, and June, and we're processing them right now, we would attempt to mm. process all of them. It may not be all in one lump sum. You may not get one lump sum payment, but within a short time. So if we process um, April and May, we more than likely will process together if they are both outstanding. June, th thereafter, once we have the information from the employer to say, yes, you're still unemployed for that period, and, and so on. Okay. So I'm getting the sense that there isn't necessarily to say that uh, this is the month that we're dealing with because the applications as they come in perhaps will be for different months. That's correct. Now that we are in July. Right. So even if you were to send in that application and you, it's for the month of May, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't get paid the month of May if you send it in June or and say, well, oh my God, I send that. Yeah. I can't get May payments no. yet. No, that's that's not necessarily how it works. So you pay once the application is has come to the attention and it is being processed yes. so you get paid for that month and you meet the eligibility requirements for all three months so there's no cut off to say if you don't send by a particular time you forfeit a period before no okay and so you will get paid even if we are in the month of july uh, there's another important question here and the person wants to know why when you get your severance pay in the month of may in the beginning of june um you are not allowed for the erp for me. I'm not sure I quite understand. Uh, you get the, the severance is done in the month of May, and uh, so perhaps the person has been uh, laid off or made redundant, and so payment is made by the employer, and but in the beginning of June, you are not allowed for you to benefit under the ERP for me. If the, if the financial benefit, well, the severance money is that you would have gotten would be a financial benefit to you. If those monies relate to the period of May, you'll be processed as normal once you meet the elig eligibility requirement, and any financial benefit you would have gotten would have been deducted. If the severance amount exceeded the amount you'd have qualified under the economic relief, it would result in a, a zero payout. Not that you are not entitled, it's just that your payout would have been zero because of the financial benefit you got by virtue of the severance amount. Yeah, because I take it that the, the, the um the applicant, the, the caller, um, the writer, uh, mm -hmm. would, um, they're looking at the timing of the payment. So um, the payment is made, they receive the payment in June. In June, right? the beginning of but June. But you see that the, but the payment relates to the period April. Right? Now, if there's a significant period, I mean, like the payment is received in December, right, a long term, and although the, the program does not extend that far, right, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's some consideration, but the payment is received reasonable with, within reasonable proximity mm -hmm. to, the, to the, the period you're claiming for. And it's in relation to the period you're claiming for, therefore it is, it's applicable to, for deduction um, from whatever you entail from the NIC. Another question here, and I suppose this has to do with the income support program, uh, when are the vendors getting paid? Okay, so just to clarify, as it relates to the, the differentiation between the income support program and the NIC economic relief program, the income support program is administered by the, the okay. government of St. Lucia. So the application process, the, payments. the review of the applications and so on are done by the, the government payments. of St. Lucia. The payments are actually being done by the government of St. Lucia. It's a government-funded program. NIC is providing support as it relates to particular pieces of information that are required, but the payment actually be done by the government. So to answer the, the question, I think a representative from the government would be better placed to confirm when those payments would be made. So one or two uh, queries here pertaining to bank accounts. And one individual is querying that um, uh, an amount of $325 um, c not accounted for the account or removed from the account and uh, the banker indicated that um, the NIC uh, perhaps money is reverted to the NIC. Is there any sort of situation in which something like this may occur? Monies would have been deposited to somebody's account, account and but and re somehow reverted to the end, yeah. 
to, to the NIC? Is there a situation that would allow for such a transaction to happen uh, we'll or probably, mistransaction? We'll probably need more details on that. We know the bank would send back monies to us if they cannot find the account mm -hmm. or if the, the account information is incorrect. But if it's a, 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 legit, a legitimate um, applicant mm -hmm. and the money goes to a legitimate account, then we've not had instances where that money would be sent back to us. And we've not, we'd only ask um, the bank to send back some money if there's a, a problem with the application or we realize it's a, it's a fraudulent claim or something of the sort. I cannot um, think now of any such instance. I don't know if you all guys no, remember. I have, I have come but, across um, no. no such. So that person could probably call in um, and we'd probably try to get somebody to, to look at the specifics um, of that particular um, claim. So let's talk about we alluded to rejected uh, applications and perhaps some of the reasons why those applications would have been rejected, would have been disallowed. 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 We want to use the word disallowed <laughs> instead. So on what basis would some of those, because I think we have in the region of 1400, which would have been disallowed, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah. One of the main reasons would be the absence of contribution received which would be a fair, there's an expectation that you were employed in, in the month of February 2020, you'd have at least contributed once to the national insurance. So we have a basis for, is, is for the contributors. If our search reveals that there are no contribution information, then there's, there's no basis um, to, to approve. So you would not have met that eligibility requirement. The second one would be where we, your, Unemployment was not as a result of COVID. So you probably may have been unemployed, say, in, in March or, or February, but it wasn't as a result of COVID. Maybe you left to take up another job, or and maybe that did not realize, or... Um, Fired. Yeah, or, or yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you were terminated for reasons other or, than COVID. Or resigned. Well, or resigned, had some yeah. Like that as well. Or resigned. Mm -hmm. That would be another reason why you would not have qualified. And so the verification process, because each application would have to be verified, what's the, the sort of time allotment for the verification? Does it that add to the sort of response time that you give as well? Yes, it varies. We, one of the biggest challenges that we have is juggling the efficiency of getting it out on time and accuracy, a reasonable le level of accuracy within controls to ensure that there's no manipulation or... or in the, of the system. So you have the applications being processed. We have a second person verifying it just for, to ensure accuracy, and then it's get, it gets sent down to accounts for payment. Mm -hmm. Where we try to g make up on the efficiency is to have it electronic. So you don't necessarily have persons manually doing the comparisons, but you need somebody to look on to ensure that there's nothing that flags as, as an error. So we have the, the points of processor, verifier, and, and payment. We have further streamlined that. Once the first payment have gone through, as in the month of April have gone through, we figure we've already gone through the rigorous due diligence. May and June, it would only require one person just go back and verify, particularly that the employer has not submitted a change of information. Because what we would have processed was based on information for, for April. So we expect to see increased efficiencies for the following months, provided that there are no changes in the information. We are, we are actually seeing um, changes, persons co confirming that they have changed information, persons have gone back, and, and so on. So we need to factor those in. But generally, these are the steps that, that w we go through if an application is approved. This is not a, an automatic. I think there seem to be a... a an expectation, I don't know if, I sh if, that, if that's what it is, For, like you on, see a payroll, it is not standard where you on NIC's payroll and you know automatically you just rerun a payroll every month. Circumstances may change. If there are no, no changes, then it is easier to, to rerun. But once there are changes, you need to go in and tweak it and then, so that takes some time. Do you have a set date for a payment for, at, for each month? So if you pay in the first of every month, uh, would that make it an easier process? Oh. Oh, or is it even feasible to do it in that manner? It's not feasible. We actually set targets. Um, but then, you know, they, they say the best laid plans not um, survive the first bullet in the battle. So, and as you go through, you see new um, 
permutations and new scenarios coming up which you have to deal with. Um, so, so yes, but um, what we have, we have the account staff working late every night because we use EFT, the economic um, funds transfer, because it's the easiest thing, where, well, it's, the easier. it's yeah, easier than having to do checks, etc. in the banks. So you have the system generating listing to be paid, and this has to be uploaded, um, and, and it has to be verified because the EFT requires three, uh, an importer, you, you know about him on me, yeah. uh, an importer, a verifier, and somebody to authorize the transaction because there's no check, physical sync, going to you on the computer, you need whatever it is. And that is um, emailed to the bank, sent to the bank. And then the bank might take 24 to 48 hours before it goes to your account. Right? And again, because the bank probably uses a, 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 an electronic, a, a digital system, uh, these computers not think of anything as if it does not meet in one little digit is off, mm -hmm. from, it goes off into a return, a bin or something. So you find, but that's the most efficient way to get it done. So we have our accounts are working nightly, right through, till about maybe now, the, I mean, the guys are breaking down now, quite honestly. Um, we have staff who are working constantly. We have, we have an overtime system, um, but, but people are at it constantly. And remember, we've been at it, at it for, for months now, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we are churning out, as soon as a, a list is, is generated, we churn it out. We do not wait for set dates, we just churn it out. So we, let's, the set date is as soon as possible, as soon as it's available. Yes. So multiple times a day, we have mm -hmm. multiple batches. So there's no, we only wait until once a week or so on. Multiple times a day, every day mm -hmm. of the week. Yeah. And, and even now, oh, we have Saturday. meetings all the time. So we look at what's outstanding. And we try to see if we could cut corners in terms of, of relaxing some of the controls where we are reasonably comfortable that, that um, there's a, a diminished risk of any fraud. And it just suits us we can speed up the stuff. But we cannot afford to just simply just dish out monies like this without ensuring that we pay into the persons who are legitimately uh, mm -hmm. uh, entitled to it. Yeah. Because people are trying things. I mean, even now, people are now coming to register now to pay back. Um, people have not been on the system for yeah. 20 years just to pay back to get, to get um, we see one person try to register a daughter um, who has not been working in the system for quite a while. Um, people 89 years old or, or <laughs> 72 years old, people who have been in already pensioned. So there are lots of things coming through. In fact, just to start off, the system rejected, well, people tried about, it's over 20 something um, yeah. um, thousand, um, thousand. Um, applicants. The system was, uh, well, spat out about 5,700 mm -hmm. initially, and then the rest came through legitimately. Um, and then this have to be processed further. So it, it is a, a Herculean task, and I think the staff have done um, quite well. I, I mean, I understand persons' um, um, situation out there, and I mean, you just have to empathize. But I want them to know that the NIC is, is doing everything it can to make sure that they get the monies on a timely basis. And again, we have made 18,000 payments so far. Um, it's unfortunate that some people have not gotten. But again, those persons, there are legitimate reasons. And if they call in, we'll put people on it to make sure that they could get through it. And of course, the criteria of that is, well, I'm calling, but I can't get my uh, um, call answered. But just to follow up from what you were saying, Director, we have a question here. For non-contributors to the NIC, if you are... 60 years old and operating a bar, do I qualify? And I suppose they're referring now to the income support. Yes, oh, and, yeah. and they would probably qualify under the government program, but uh, again, Suan is, is our point person on the, on the, to, the, income the, income support on the program to the government, yes. Um, so I don't know if you talk on that, um, but it's a government, I mean, it's a program and the government are making the payments. But no, um, they would probably have to apply to the government to determine whether or not they qualify. Mm -hmm. That's and so would 60 years, would someone be able to qualify if they're 60 years old? I don't know that Is somebody, yeah, 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 someone who's 60 years, a uh, uh, criteria saying you have to be less than 60 years, younger than 60 years to qualify. Okay. All right. So, um, so a lot of people, let's talk about the bureaucratic problems. Since we know we have all of those bottlenecks there, what are some of the solutions that you look into? to sort of ease in the strain, the burden? Right. First, you could probably identify the, well, we have identified the problems. <laughs> so I guess each of the problems, there might be some sort of solution. So good. All right. So we have increased the number of persons who are engaged in processing and verifying, definitely as one of them. We do recognize one of the areas we could have improved on is our the timeliness of our communication to the applicants. We know that. And we have been making strides, like the director said, to automate that process. So one of the responses to the delayed response in getting feedback from the NIC is to attempt to automate. Because of the number of different reasons why, say, somebody's claim is inquiry, 
or, or has been uh, disallowed. Uh, programming it obviously needs a lot of fine tuning. So in, t in attempting to have it be automated, we are, we are working on that. And we do recognize that there have been a, a time lapse that would be unreasonable for, for most, and we do apologize for that. But we are trying to, to do better at that with our automation. And it's not automated, it's automated further, because there, automate is, there is automation, but yes. we're trying to make it more efficient in terms of making it automatic. Yes. Um, right now, we're using a hybrid of the system and, and some importing. Right now, I want to do that starts the process, it goes right away. No time lapse. That's what we're looking for. So that's, that's a great solution mm -hmm. moving forward. Yes, and yeah. the guys are actively now programming to, to, to make that happen. Yeah. Particularly mm -hmm. for those persons whose claims are in query, so we would have started processing it, um, and they may not have received payment, at least to let them know it is because it has been disallowed, they had not met for whatever eligibility requirement that was not met, or we having difficulty with query. Another issue is with, with regards to the mismatch in the NI numbers, so actually pulling up the legitimate claim and to be able to go have that application go through the system. It's when it's taking some time, but at least getting, we're trying to get to the applicant on a timely basis to let them know the status. I think that mm -hmm. is one of the areas that we recognize that there's a need for improvement that we are working on. We've also ex um, increased the number of lines. Um, yeah. I have the, the numbers and I plan to actually put out um, some communication on that. I got it today. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a few additional lines um, dedicated to responding to um, um, requests for information from the claimants. And we did hire additional persons. And additional persons yes. to man those phones. So mm -hmm. we will be issuing the, releasing the numbers uh, by the end of today. It will be on our, on our site. And um, we'll probably- Additional telephone numbers. Additional uh, telephone numbers, yeah. Okay, so we need to have additional bodies in there to be Absolutely. able to handle yeah. those yes. lines. Give us an idea though, so that we can get a fuller sense, a fuller understanding how many uh, persons are manning the phones. Do you have a, a, a number of how many people are manning phones right now? Um, six at, at the moment, it's with the inclusion of the, the three new ones. So I think we have six. But every, every call, every officer um, practically answers um, questions relating to ERP yeah. because people may have numbers. I mean, some people call me directly and I say, how did you get this number? And they say, yeah. But um, we, every single officer at the NIC responds once they get a call and we'll look in and give you the information. So what about maternity and sick leave payments? Those are being done irrespective of the ERP. Yeah, and, and that is a challenge if you because these are the persons we existed, we, we, we exist to serve initially. Mm -hmm. um, when I say these persons, those claims, well, this is what we, uh, it's on our menu to serve. Mm -hmm. The ERP came after, um, and again, it is not one that is funded through the 10%. Uh, so we cannot ignore those claims coming through. We have to give them some, some priority because those persons need the money as well as other people. So we have to have some resources which are um, allocated to deal with this. And that again makes it a bit difficult because we have to do our main work. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have to meet the, the expectations of our contributors who are out of work because uh, they're hurting like, like, like um, and we understand that they're hurting. Um, but I could guarantee you, I could like, give you the assurance that my staff are uh, moving whatever obstacles they have to move, they have put in there whatever effort that is necessary to ensure the work is done. And um, we, we get in there, I think. Um, we get in there and we just want you to be appreciative of us that um, anybody who's entitled to the payments from the NIC, they will get the monies. Is there a situation where a sick leave uh, benefit payment or maternity leave a payment would render an ERP payment um, disallowed? <laughs> it depends on the higher of the two. So the regulations make provision for NIC paying the higher of the two. So if your maternity benefit or sickness benefit for that same period amounts to more than you'd qualify for the ERP, you'd have gotten paid for the maternity or the sickness. Or whatever so that's it between is. the 500 to the $1,500. Mm -hmm. If the payment for the sick leave or maternity benefit is higher than that amount, you would have to give just the maternity or sick leave benefit. I mean, you, you, you apply to both, so they're both in our system. So if you, the maternity benefit would have qualified for, say, $1,000 and your ERP would have qualified for 500 more than likely not, considering that we are using the, the 50%, mm -hmm. uh, but you would have gotten paid your maternity, which would be the, th the $1,000. 
it, again, it's timing as well, because you may have gotten your maternity paid ahead of your ERP. When your ERP has been processed, if you have paid your maternity, which was less than what your ERP, you'd have been paid the difference in your ERP when your ERP became due. So the, the objective is to ensure that you are getting the higher of the two benefits. Now, some people argue, well, this is a, such a tumultuous time, and no amount of money given to anyone now is too much because they're unemployed. Mm. So even if they were to have gotten some benefits from the employer, why not? Why can they not still benefit from the ERP? Well, well the NIC funds are not unlimited. And if we have a basket of, 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 of let's say, a basket of monies, and some people are getting assistance, others are not, it's, that basket would go along a lot further if we can spread it. Um, if, if, if we could, let's put it out, we'd want that basket to serve as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And if some people are already getting a benefit, it's unfair, I think, to have them get the same mm -hmm. amount as other persons, um, because in the end, fewer persons will end up getting um, from that basket. So had we had unlimited funds, yes, we could have done that um, and just, just issue a check. It would be a lot easier. But at the same time, you have, it's possible that some persons would be um, employed, well, employers will be giving some persons, especially I know that there was a, a plan for managers to get a certain amount of money, um, which would be more than what the, the staff would be getting. Mm -hmm. and in addition to that, they would end up getting 50%, which is the higher end of the NIC's um, thing. They'll be end up getting the 1500 mm -hmm. from the NIC, plus what we get from the employers. Okay? So in a way, um, you would find that um, that basket of monies would be spread amongst fewer persons, that if that same 1500 would be spread to other persons who are probably entitled. So, um, it's, it's, it's important that at least we, we, we meet the demand pathway instead of no way at all. Because if it becomes too costly, it's something that we'll not be able to do. And if it's too many people having to be served um, from the same, same basket, it would be a lot less money for everybody. So I think it's, 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 it was in our, it was, and it goes along the, the whole, th um, the whole um, um, concept of, of income support in mm -hmm. the sense that we know that to replace your income, we need to support you, and um, you're getting some support already, so we could help um, others. Mm -hmm. you. Um, other persons have nothing, they will get something. So at least we, we are able to ensure a, a minimum of threshold. Of, of uh, yeah, a minimum income. threshold that of 50% of your insurable earnings, um, that you at least get something for you to be able to survive on. Okay, so bear with me on this one. Mm -hmm. um, we have a query here. I was already paid for the uh, month of April, and I have not gotten paid for me. And when I messaged the NIC, they told me the application is being processed. And I know for a fact that the majority of my co-workers have gotten paid. How come some of us got money and, uh, and you're still processing the rest? They're all working for one company. So this individual is saying that they applied for April, got paid for April, but me, they haven't received anything for me yet other employees of that same company have already received. Right. It, it might be in the, the order in which it's not necessary that you are, pro you are processing all Companies. employees at a time. Mm -hmm. we, we, we try to do that, but there's a, a pool of applications to be processed. So it probably might be the order in which that application falls in, in line. But if the uh, other employees have been processed, there should not be too too much longer considering that we probably would have had the information from the employer to facilitate that. Mm. And you're right, and sometimes you find that the employers will load, upload information and an, an employee would have been excluded. Mm -hmm. uh, or um, human error, it could be that, that even in our processing, sometimes somebody could slip through the crack. Mm -hmm. So because again, you're dealing with thousands of persons. Um, and again, we, we, we want to empathize with the, the, the individual. and. Um, I, I, I take a point that if, you, if we, we told her it's been processed, there should be some follow-up to ensure that it's been done. So, um, short of, of information on the specifics, it might be difficult to deal mm -hmm. with, but again, it's something, um, if the person has, um, could, could email, well, again, she already emailed, so we don't know who it is. But if we talk about the system generally, yes, this could happen, um, because the employee may not have uploaded the information, or there could have been human error where in the processing that that person could have, been, could have slipped out. Now, if it's a, a hotel, now, there might be a situation where for the hotels, the hotel employees may have considered for the hotels to get the monies on their behalf. Now, if those, these people are, uh, 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 they're processed separately from mm -hmm. those persons who do not consent because with the hotel, we send one check to for all of those persons, so we are able to, to process this a lot faster. 
for, and then we could go to the individuals and now have to tally that information to the hotel information. So again, it might be a situation if it's a hotel that, that the other employees may have been processed because they consented, and, and um, in that person did not consent, then they would just take the, the, the queue um, like everybody else. Uh -huh. uh, someone here, so one individual is uh, wanting to know, in terms of the support for the employers, and I think we, we spoke about that a little earlier on, but if you can just reiterate it, um, how are you helping the employers to understand the form, how to fill the form out? Okay. Well, we have um, the, the, the technician who is working on the employer portal. Uh, at, in, in every instance where we receive um, some information that an employer is having difficulty, we put them directly in touch and they walk them through the system. We, that happens all the time. Um, we also have the, 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 the demonstration on the website. Uh, and I don't know, for some reason, a lot of employers do not want to go and follow the demonstration. I like and I don't, I don't know why, but we took the time to, to create a demonstration on what is required. Um, they, prefer, they prefer to speak directly with the technicians, and we, we pretty much facilitate that. Um, but at any time, any, and if anyone has difficulty, all they need to do is to reach out to us and we will certainly try to assist them. Okay. But there is a video, there is a the, demonstration. There is a, the, yeah, there's a guideline which gives you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to complete the, the employer portal. Right, so just to reiterate for the public, um, the NIC has been able to process 21,000 applications, correct? Mm -hmm. so we correct. have had 18,500 payments that have been made. Um, the average, the per payment, the per payment that's $830.16. And the payout total thus far is $15.3 million. That's correct? Yeah, we'll that's just take, correct, take yes. the notes down immediately. Uh, so before we wind up, um, let's talk about, about the extension. We've yeah. been alluding to it, the income support program. Um, when will the NIC get the go-ahead to now um, initiate, implement, roll out? We got it on the 30th of June, the, um, the statutory instrument yeah. was enacted, it was published, and so now we have the legislative authority to proceed. And that money has already been deposited into the coffers of the NIC? Well, the Again. NIC has, has monies available from various accounts which it could transfer to, the, to that ERP account as needed. So just to clarify, the income support is a what government a funded Yes, a government funded program. Right, that is yes. not the, the NIC funded program. So NIC would not be the one responsible for making oh. those payments. It will be paid through the government of uh, St. Lucia. I think Lisa Mendy. Uh, she said, so she said, said I said think income support. Income support. Oh, income support. No, it's my apologies. Income support. Oh, income yes. support. Income okay. support. Yeah. Right, yes. this is the government funded. The government funded one. Yes. And so the government end of things will be taking care of that. Yes. But Separately. we've seen the extension right. of the ERP now. Yes. It's the, the statutory instrument I spoke about, okay. which is on the 30th of June. On the 30th of June. Yes. Right. So for the ERP, and are you, I mean, you spoke about being able now to increase the number of people manning the phones. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now to double up for you to ensure that this three month extension uh, does not uh, bind the NIC in the way that uh, the, this current um, rollout is doing? Right. Are you doing anything differently? Like w w what, what we expect, because we ha the persons who we imagine would have qualified for the July, August, and September would have been more than likely persons who have already applied and processed on the system. So the real hard work of going through the due diligence would have really happened on the upfront. So we are hoping that once there are no changes to the information, those would be a lot smoother in terms of the, the, the time to process those. One of the critical aspects for us to facilitate the smooth rollout is the timeliness with which we receive information of whether or not there are any changes, whether persons have been re-employed or if there are more persons who have been laid off that we need to be informed of, then, then those get processed. Mm. But the timeliness with which we are aware that um, the extension of the layoff period, some persons when they applied, because the initial period was for three months, they may need to tell us that they have actually since extended in keeping with the, the new regulations um, for, for the further six months or whether those persons have been re-employed. 
Yeah. And the start of the program is always the most, the, the, the most difficult part of it. And, and in April, we were programming, we were trying to, mm -hmm. to, to process applications. Remember, we started with this, the well, we wanted to have some physical forms available. And right. then because of the, 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 the numbers, we had to, 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 to roll back. Um, so April was, uh, would have been the most difficult months, and we'd have seen a lot of the TV, dealt with a lot of the TV problems. And even now, we continue to automate further to make sure that things are done faster. We bring in new, new persons on board, additional persons on board. And, and um, we understand our staff will be getting tired. So we're looking at probably even implementing, if necessary, additional shifts, if necessary. But again, mm -hmm. even if they have more shifts, they have to have people to be able to process those, th th those payments. So, um, and the which, yeah, and not only that, um, we have to, uh, we back up our systems every night. So uh, we have to time that in such a way that, um, so we can have people working throughout the clock. The, the system takes a long time to back up because we have we back up to more than one site mm -hmm. because we have NIC we have information information which we have to deal with. So, in as much as we want to bring people around the clock to work, we have certain times that are available to us, and they could work up to a certain time so that mm -hmm. they could back up. So we have to close the system by a particular time. And right now we move we have people processing maybe up to eight o'clock in the night, um, and we have the council people working sometimes way nine ten o'clock right to get this out. At the same time, the same people have to get the short term benefits out. Uh, so the ERP is already a significant amount. The short term is, is a lot as much. So it's, it's it as much as you could bring as many people as possible. The people have to be trained. They have to know the system. You have to have um, physical locations. It is not as simple as just increasing resources. And the resources. confidentiality, mm -hmm. the the confidentiality of personal information. information. Mm -hmm. the, so. the other big thing, too, um, it would be the accuracy of the information on, init on the initial application. That a lot of the, when we checked for April, we had over more than 5,000 claims with queries. So most of these would have been cleared and the issues addressed and resolved. Mm -hmm. So going forward for the additional months, we, there would be no need to go back and investigate all the issues. The bank account information would have been corrected by then. The issues with the NI numbers, the employers would have had the correct information. Most of that would have been resolved at that stage. So we, we anticipate a smoother rollout for the additional three months as we are wrapping up but just one query here an individual is saying that uh, some individuals are getting paid twice in a one month period what would lend it to something like that happening it could have been like we said it could have been the time when the application came in that we are trying to catch up so if it is that they were entitled to two months we would try to pay them back to back yeah. to, to get them up to the period that, that they, they should be. I'll give you a typical scenario we may have had a, a, a claim for April inquiry and we finally are yes, able so. to resolve the query. But me is used to just be that person for April and May. And that is why we recognize the need for the system to generate the, the, whatever the correspondent that goes to the, employ, to the employee to say that this payment is for April and May. Now, what we had previously was just saying, your payment has been processed. Mm -hmm. But now we have to specify for what month, because right now we're looking to pay more than one month at a time, as long as the information is consistent throughout the month. Okay. And so of that, the, the 21,000 payments, that would be for what month? Um, both, it, both it's, it spans, of April, it spans yeah, all, April. okay, mm -hmm. so both April, yeah, but yeah. Mostly, so it will span the mostly April, May, no. May and June right, the right, so the majority would be June April. because uh, if, if, you, if you look at it from the sense that somebody who, an application we receive now, because that 21,000 is current applications now, which includes person. No, but the, the what has been processed and the payments made, Mm -hmm. The payments would include um, the majority uh, of the uh, payments related to April. April. Yeah, April, April. And we've made payments in May, and I think mm -hmm. maybe very few for June, right? If yeah. any. No, but no, no. We have not. Yeah. We have well, not so made mostly, payments. Mostly April. April. We've we practically done all, just a few we have on current April, yeah. and we've done a significant amount in May. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. And we still have new applications that are coming, coming in for April. April. Okay. Yeah. And for so June, the June payment will be you're expected to begin payments. Soon, because when? we just we just planned a meeting. We had planned a meeting today to see how we could cut corner suggests to pay off me um, within within by, by next week completely, and then start start to start, start the month start of June. Because we had initially um, targeted the first week in July to pay June, mm -hmm. uh, but again, we make plans. But then, yeah. just to be clear on the cutting corners, we would try to fast track the payments mm -hmm. provided that they've been processed. If there there may be some that may have slipped through the cracks because of us trying to balance efficiency with accuracy. We would seek to recover any over on the payments if they were made as a result of that in the subsequent months. We are guided by the regulations. So whatever it is we process, it would be in and at least in keeping with the regulations. So persons, just, just to be mindful that 
if you get a, a, a notification indicating that an adjustment is being made, it was because of a quest to try to get payments to you as quickly as possible at the time, within reason, within accurate, as accurately as possible. But if we do have reason to believe, maybe even the information that was submitted at the time has since changed. We, found, we got a few of those cases where we would have processed, given the information we had at the time, mm -hmm. and there have been changes to the information submitted by the employer, say. Or, we, or maybe our investigation showed that, or a C3 form, which is the form that informs us of contributions paid on behalf of persons who are employed and earning an income. Those who came in after that would suggest to us that those persons may have been employed, but we got notification that they were unemployed. It may have resulted in some sort of recovery, an attempt to recover them that would have been paid. So just to say, whilst we're trying to manage efficiency and pay as quickly as possible, we need to balance that aspect of it. Right. So final words, parting words there, some reassurance coming from you to the people of St. Ocean. Well, we want to say that we understand, um, well, and I, I'm talking mostly to those persons who have not received the monies. Mm -hmm. We understand the situation, and we give you the assurance that the NIC is, is um, mobilizing all the necessary resources to ensure that this is done in as speedily a manner as possible um, without at the same time compromising the fund. So bear patience with us. Uh, we understand the situation. We know the, the difficulties you face and we've taken this to heart and we'll do whatever is necessary to, to meet, meet your, your expectations of us. Mm -hmm. Nothing on your end. Well, well for, for us, we continue to communicate with the public. Um, we use every available medium, social media platforms. We use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We are on those platforms. Um, we continue to man our live chat platform as well as the telephones and email. It's quite a lot for a three-man team, but we continue to do it. We understand the hardships, as the director explained. We will continue to assist everyone we have a number of um, persons calling, both employers and employees, about their claims. We will continue to assist you as much as possible. We will provide the information on the additional lines later today um, that you can use to access the NIC employees to um, get some clarification on your indi on individual claims. And um, we should have that information out by later today. So, Anne, what can you say to the people to help them help you to help them. Yeah, so while we continue to refine our processes to try to get those payments out to those persons who we know we need to, to reach as quickly as possible, I'd like to use this opportunity to implore the employers to provide us with the feedback that we need as timely as possible. We try to make it as less administratively burdensome as possible. Just reply to the email telling us whether there's been on information has not changed for as much as you can say we in July now, so you would know your position up to June. At the end of July, don't don't necessarily wait for us to reach out to ask have there been any changes or or, or inform us of any changes. Once we have that information on, it would assist us to process the payments for the employees as quickly as possible. Let me say thank you so much to all of you for coming in. I know that uh, if you having to make the time to come here, it means the time you've taken off from being able to process and take care of uh, what the NIC is so um, mandated and inundated with right now. Let's say thank you very much to the director of the NIC, Mr. Matthew Mathra, uh, the a group internal auditor, who is Mrs. Sue Ann Ashari Payne, and the communications manager, McNaughton McLean, just for emphasis or reemphasizing, reiterating over 21 thousand applications um, processed, received and processed. We have 18,500 payments and with a, a average per payment of $830.16. And in total, we've seen $15.3 million in a payout. I know that for those of you who have not received, it seems as if it will never come. But from all that I've heard here today indicates uh, that the payments are being processed, it is coming, and so it's just a matter of patience. We want to say and invite you back at any point when you have any updates, please feel free so that we can communicate with the public. I'm Lisa Joseph signing off from the Information Command Center. See you next time.